If you're just starting YouTube videos, it can be pretty daunting figuring out how to make the best quality content without a whole bunch of professional gear. What most people don't realize is you can make quality YouTube content using some devices that you most likely already own. Every video I have made so far, I have shot on my iPhone XS and I have edited on my iPad Pro 2020. There is a lot that goes into shooting a YouTube video such as framing the shot, the lighting, the audio, but where a YouTube video really comes to life comes from the editing process. The iPad has so many great applications that allow you to make great YouTube content at a fraction of the price as some professional gear or software. That is why in this video, I'm gonna show you the top seven applications that I use for making my YouTube videos using my iPad in 2021. met yet or you're new to my channel then welcome my name is Nathan and on this channel I do tech reviews unboxings and tips and tricks and if you're interested in more content just like this then don't forget to hit the subscribe button as I don't want you miss any of my future content with that being said my first and probably most important application I use for making my YouTube videos is LumaFusion I use LumaFusion as my main video editing application and this is by far the most versatile and comprehensive video editing software you can get for the iPad. So LumaFusion will cost you a one-time purchase of $29.99 US dollars. And I know this sounds like a lot, but compared to other video editing software such as Final Cut Pro, which goes for $300, you can do a whole lot with this software and it won't limit you unlike other video editing applications like iMovie. This is probably one of the biggest investments you can make for your YouTube channel as the video editing really transforms your video from an average or a slightly above average to a great YouTube video. So just to quickly run over some of the basics of LumaFusion, it is so seamless and easy to use. You can quickly drag and drop in different video clips, audio clips, pictures, files, music, anything you want into the pre-described timeline. The timeline is super easy to navigate and there are so many shortcuts between copying and pasting settings from one clip to another, to built-in transitions. You can upload a bunch of different effects, music, or whatever else you might need to make your video stand out. The Apple Pencil also works really well and seamless with LumaFusion, and I haven't noticed that it slowed me down at all. In fact, I actually think that my workflow is a little quicker just using the iPad and the Pencil as compared to hooking up a keyboard and a wireless mouse to it. And this is because there are different hand gestures that you can do on the iPad with your fingers, such as like zooming in on the timeline and zooming out with a pinch. LumaFusion is easy to pick up and to gain the foundations of, but there is such a large learning curve to it where you can really have the ability just to take your video editing to the next level if you put in the time and dedication into learning the application. So I'm not gonna give like an in-depth tutorial of LumaFusion in this video that would need its own separate video just because there's so much you can do in it and I wouldn't even consider myself a professional I am nowhere near that and I'm still learning each and every day like new tips and tricks and stuff to do to boost up my video editing skills if you're interested in LumaFusion tips and videos then down below in the description I'm gonna leave a link to Rob HK's YouTube channel as I've learned most of my LumaFusion like kind of tutorials and stuff like that from there. He's a fantastic YouTuber and has really helped me and my own personal experience with LumaFusion grow. So now the next app I really recommend you getting for your iPad for the sake of YouTube is Notion. And I use Notion for all of my script writing, video tracking, and video progression as I'm going through each of them. As you can see here, I use this video progression tracking process that I found from Ali Abdal. So this video tracking process, you create different categories for each video idea that you have. And then as you progress through the timeline of the video, you'll start to move it as like you've completed each check mark or checkpoint on this list right here. So looking at the first one, no status, which is just general video ideas. And then the next one's ideas, which are videos that you want to make in the future. Then there's writing a script. I put videos into this category when I'm in the process of writing the script for the video. The next category is script ready, which is when a script is completely finished and then is just kind of sitting there waiting for me to set up my camera equipment and ready to film it. The next one is filmed, so I'll move the video into this category 
Once when I have completely filmed the video and everything I need for the different shots, A roll and B roll. So next category is editing and I will leave a video in this section throughout the whole process of me video editing and this usually takes the longest amount of time. And the final one is published and so this is where I'm gonna keep all of my finished video ideas that I've completely finished from start to end. And I like this because I don't ever have to like delete the scripts to like make room. It's nice and organized in its own category and if I ever need to go back for like information in the scripts that I write, I can go back and check these out in the publish section I can just copy and paste it into a new one if I need it. Notion syncs across all devices, so I have it on my computer, I have it on my iPad, my phone. Anything that you type on one of them instantly syncs up to another one. It's just great having that connectivity between all devices. So like if I'm out and about and I have a video idea, I can quickly go into Notion, write it down on a new idea, and then I'll have it later on to work for, and I won't like forget about it throughout the day. There's a whole lot more that you can do with Notion, but I've recently just gotten into it and I do really like the workflow of it, so I wanted to include it in here, but there's a lot more you can do, and if you're interested in it, I'm gonna leave Ali Abdal's YouTube channel down below in the description to help you out. So now the next application that I highly recommend everyone to get is Lightroom. So Lightroom is my go-to photo editing application for the iPad, as there's a crazy amount of customization that you can do to photos when you upload them to the app. I use this application for editing all Instagram photos I may have or thumbnail photos I wanna use in the future. There is so much that you can do in this photo editing application such as adjusting the lighting, color, effects, details, optics, and more. You can also view other people's work that they've done through photo editing to really give you inspiration and to kinda of see how they did it themselves from start to finish and it's amazing like what people do with this software. So now the next application I use for almost all of my YouTube videos is Mojo. So Mojo is a commonly used app to help make Instagram stories pop more, make them a little more interesting, but it is where I go to to make all of like my overlay title animations. I actually paid for the yearly subscription when it was on sale just because I thought it would be a great investment and I really do like these animated overlays and it saves me a lot of time from having to go through and make my own animations each time. So I'm gonna quickly run through how I make an overlay using this application. You can make some using just the regular version, but there's definitely not as much as you can do as with the pro version. So to make one of these animated overlays, you're gonna scroll through and find the blank canvas in Mojo. Next, you're gonna to go to format, landscape, and then add a green screen background. Next, press the plus icon on the bottom right corner of the screen and hit the text. Then you can scroll through all different types of pre-animated text that can be further customized later. When you find an animation that you like, you click on it and then you can go in and edit the text afterwards. When you have the text that you want, I usually go to the timing and increase the time of the clip to six seconds as it makes it easier later on when video editing so I don't have to like copy and paste the middle part of it over and over again to fit how long I want. Then when you have everything to your liking, you can save it and either download it to your photos or import it directly into LumaFusion. So here's a quick on how to actually put in one of these overlay animations into your videos. So you're gonna import it into LumaFusion and then you're gonna drag the clip into the timeline itself. You're gonna double press on the clip and then go over to the color and effects tab at the bottom. Next, you're gonna click on the keyhole icon at the top right and then press on the green screen key, which is usually the first one. Then all you wanna do is go to frame and fit at the bottom left corner, and you can readjust the size of your clip. And then when you go back to your timeline after it's over your A roll, when you play it through, it will come up and that green screen key will get rid of the background. And then all you're left with is the animation that you made in Mojo. So again, this is just a great app that I've used and I love so far. There's so many different animations you can pick from and I really think that it does add another level of like professionalism to my videos. That would take me forever to do without it. So now the next app I use for a lot of my videos is Keynote. So I use Keynote for all other screen overlays that aren't text specifically. For example, I made my subscribe animation in Keynote and I've also used it for kind of like dimensioning different objects in past videos that I've made. Similar to Mojo, how you make these overlays is by importing in a green screen in the background or setting the background color to the green color and then putting in whatever text or symbols you want. So for the dimensions, I put in different sized arrows. And then from there, it's just exporting it and then importing it into LumaFusion and going through the same process for those Mojo overlays as this. 
and then you can have kind of this dimension overlay if you want or whatever else you're using. But this is my go-to for kind of other things besides text related that I wanna put into my videos. Then the next application I use for some of my videos is Procreate. So I know Procreate is like a drawing and art application, but you can do things in this to put into your YouTube videos. Not only is it arguably the best drawing application on the iPad, but same with the other two applications, if you put in a green screen behind whatever you're drawing, and then you screen record something that you're drawing, you can put it in on a LumaFusion timeline as an overlay with the green screen key. And then you can now have different drawing animations pop up around your screen. I really think that this makes your videos a lot more personal as it's your own hand drawing. And I know a lot of people do like this look and I do plan on implementing this in more into my future videos. And finally, the seventh application for my iPad I use for all my YouTube videos is Canva. This is the app that I currently use for all of my thumbnails as it has a very clean overlay and it's super easy to use and there's a lot you can do with it for free. So usually my workflow consists of setting up a thumbnail shot, taking it, importing it into LumaFusion where I edit the photo, make it look how I want, and then I'll import it into Canva. And this is where I add kind of like the details and everything else for the thumbnail that I want to make it pop. So to quickly go over how to make a YouTube thumbnail using Canva, you're gonna to go to a new project, select on the YouTube thumbnail template for the proper sizing. This is very important or else if you go to upload it to YouTube, the sizing won't fit properly. So just make sure you press on the YouTube sizing button. So then I'm gonna show you this little time lapse of how I've made my most previous thumbnail. And I'm gonna make little notes and details about stuff that I did throughout it. there you have it. Those are the seven applications I use on my iPad to completely make all my YouTube videos. Once I filmed everything on my iPhone, I imported it into my iPad and the rest of it is done with these seven applications. It is honestly amazing and I'm so happy that I haven't had to make a huge purchase into like a new PC or a new laptop to help me create these videos as I've been able to manage, I feel like making decently quality content using just these two devices alone. So if you have these two devices as well, then please feel free to take this workflow that I've showed you today, and I really hope that it can help you out in the future to boost your own content. If you feel like you learned something new today, or if you liked the video, then please go down below and subscribe and drop me a like, as it really helps me out a lot, and I also don't want to miss any future content I have. And so with that being said, have a great day everyone, and cheers. Bye.